Prince Harry was emboldened for his second day in court but still couldn't land a punch. The Duke of Sussex came out fighting for round two of his case against the Mirror newspaper but seemed to offer only suspicions. Perhaps he had a pep talk from Meghan. Perhaps he was given a path on the back of his legal team or perhaps he simply felt rejuvenated after a good night's sleep. Whatever the reason, the Duke of Sussex came out fighting as he returned to court for round two with the Mirror's highly experienced barrister, Andrew Gray. The new approach was apparent from the morning he arrived at court, smiling and waving at onlookers. He strode into the second floor courtroom looking notably relaxed and demonstrated his newfound confidence from the met from the get-go. As Mr. Green skipped the pleasantries to launch immediately into the case, Prince Harry interrupted him on mid flow. Good morning, Mr. Green, he said pointedly. The embodied deal continued in a similar vein. Gone were the nervous sticks of yesterday, the obvious signs of tension and the court anxious. Instead, came expansive answers, uninvited statements, and uh, repeated challenges to Mr. Green's claim as he plowed on through this case. I don't believe it affected the well-being of society, came the slightly snarky reply. The story is in this bit concerned the fact that Harry had delayed his entry to Sandhurst to recover from a knee injury. Several minutes were devoted to a statement released by Clarence House months earlier that had described the knee injury and included a quote from Harry himself. But the royal claimant didn't like the way it was going and tried to take matters into his own hands. My lord, I would save a lot of time by talking about the article itself as opposed to just the injury, he told Mr. Justice Fancourt. The judge deftly battled off the plea, but Harry's newfound confidence appeared to rattle Mr. Gray. Can I repeat what I told you yesterday? He snapped at one point. This is not about you asking me questions. This is about me asking you questions. The barrister continued to push on through the remaining articles that make up Harry's claim, a run through some traditional tabloid folder of old, including Harry's visit of Spearman, Rena. He did have a lot a lap dance he considered, but it wasn't a Chelsea Davy look alike. A night out with blonde PR guru Astrid Harbord, with whom he was at pains to point out he did not have a relationship. You know, so there there was some debate about how often he attended Amica, a West London nightclub. I wouldn't say I was there once a month, and whether Army cadets were expected to do five mile runs during their week their first week of Sandhurst. A story suggested that he had been banned from returning to Afghanistan wasn't about his private life, was it? Mr. Green suggested. No, the Duke replied, before swiftly adding, are you suggesting that why I was in the army that everything was available to the press to write about? And so it went up. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.